More than half a million Israeli settlers live in the occupied West Bank and East Jerusalem. That's double the number that was there just a decade ago. Depending on your perspective, these settlements are either a natural extension of the Israeli state or the single biggest obstacle to peace in the Middle East. Settlers believe all of Palestine is part of the Jewish homeland and justify their land grabs in the name of security and, of course, the Bible. The International Court of Justice says all of Israel's settlements are illegal. And the UN has said that settlers could be prosecuted for committing war crimes. The settlers themselves, however, are defiant. They say they aren't going anywhere, and their leaders claim that settlement growth is unstoppable and irreversible. So will the Palestinians ever be able to build an independent and viable state? I'm Mehdi Hassan, and tonight at the Oxford Union, I'll be going head to head with the man who until very recently was the chairman of the influential Yesha Settlers Council in the occupied West Bank. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Danny Dyan. <laughs> Danny Dyan, is it fair for me to describe you as an Israeli patriot, someone who loves his country, someone who is an ardent advocate for the Jewish state? No doubt, sure. So here's my question to you to kick us all off. If you love Israel so much, why not live inside Israel? Oh, I live inside Israel. You do? I, as a matter of fact, I live in the heart of uh, the land of Israel. So it's quite a funny question. So just to be clear for all of our viewers, you live in a West Bank settlement called Male Shomron, I believe. That's correct. And for you, that is the heart of Israel. Yes, I live in a Judea and Samaria settlement called Male Shomron, yes. So what you call Judea and Samaria, what the world tends to call the West Bank, um, is part of Israel proper. There is no distinction in your mind between the state of Israel and the West Bank and presumably Gaza too. Well, today there is a legal distinction, yes, because Israel uh, decided not to apply its full sovereignty over Judea and Samaria. So technically there is a distinction. But in your mind is what I'm wondering. Do you from see a, a distinction? From a substantive point of view, there is no distinction. No. It's all Israel? Yes. So... What I'm confused about here is you often, in this debate, um, hear spokespersons for the Israeli government um, say that the Arabs want to wipe us off the map, the Iranians want to wipe us off the map. Where do Israel's borders on that map end, in your view? In the Jordan River. But, you know, maybe the, the, the fundamental question that you should ask, or I should answer in order to this dialogue does not turn into a, a dialogue of the deaf, is that we have the full political and moral right to live, to build, to flourish in Judea okay, and Samaria. So we'll come on to this. And this, that's is, the this, is the this is the fundamental question. We'll come to that. Well, let's talk about settlements. Um, and you served as chairman of the Yesha Council, one of the most influential groups now in Israel the settler body, uh, from July 2007 to February uh, this year. During that period, the international community pretty much is as one on the role of settlements as an obstacle to peace. You said that settlements in the West Bank are not part of the problem, they're part of the solution. Explain that for me. Since the settlements strengthen Israel's, Israel's security, and the key to peace is the perception of the Arab world that they are not able to annihilate Israel, then in that respect, this, they are part of the solution for peace because it makes the dream of the Arab world to, that Israel disappears to seem more distant. But aren't you naive for assuming that the Palestinians will simply just give up on their idea no, of a no, state of self-determination on the, on the, on the grounds that you've... On the sent contrary. a message to the Arab world that Israel won't be annihilated. On the contrary, maybe. I think that I understand the national aspirations of the Palestinians much better than a leftist 
in Tel Aviv, London, or, or Berlin. I understand them fully. I respect them. And that's the reason I understand so well that there is no way to reconcile them with the national spirits of the Jewish people. The, the, the conflict in the Middle East is peculiar in the way that there are two national narratives that both are completely sincere. I see Zionism, our returning to our homeland, as, uh, 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 as I said, the national liberation movement Why of Jewish so people, and they di- see it as a 19th century colonialist Why endeavor. do so many other Israelis, why do so many other Zionists not define returning to their homeland as being returning to the West Bank? They're perfectly happy to live within no. the Green Line. No, I don't and think... And you're not. I don't think there is any Zionist that thinks that Hebron uh, or Shiloh or Bethel is not part of the our homeland. Nevertheless, there are, you are right, Zionists and Israelis that in spite of that fact are ready to give up the national aspiration to return to... Because they want to make peace, is the argument. And when the Palestinians say, we will not come to the negotiating table while you continue to build settlements on our land in defiance of international law, and you say, good, how does that show that you're at all interested in peace as you say you are? It's nothing to do with it. My conclusion is that that is a pretext that Mr. Abbas that uses the construction of the settlements as a pretext not to come to the negotiating table. Isn't that a little bit disingenuous, given that you're not interested in any offer? No. Say the Palestinians had accepted the Camp David offer, whatever that offer was, limited as it was. You are in principle opposed to a Palestinian you right. state. You are right. But so why I, do you bother about Israeli offers? You are right. But Isn't I, that a pretext? No, but you are right uh, on, the, on the assumption, but I am not the Prime Minister of Israel. It's not a, an Israeli decision to be in Judea and Samaria. You know, it's not a, an expansionist grand design of the, these Zionist, Zionist thugs that decided to, to occupy it, uh, uh, what you call the West Bank. There are, as I said, two ethnic groups, two people, that dispute the same land, no part of it, the whole of the land. Now, you could say that the just solution to conflict of that kind is so peculiar, so different from any other conflict, is partition. I can understand that. I mean, if you are an honest broker, or say, under those circumstances, I think that the just solution is Solomonic partition, I could understand that. But what happens when partition is actually offered? One party accepts it, and the other rejects it. But not only rejects it, it tries to take it all by force in 1947 and again in 1967. So that very moment, partition ceases to be the just solution to the conflict. And you think the Palestinians think your solution is just where you continue to seize the land? I mean, it's a very one-sided view of history you've just given us of the various Israeli wars. I'm asking you this, what is your solution to this conflict? That is the toughest question of all. And I will give you a, a very disappointing, even for me, disappointing answer. The conflict right now has no solution. But more dangerous than to accept the fact that it doesn't have a solution is to neglect it. You know, who is the American president that made the most damage to the Middle East? The president with the best intentions of all of them, Bill Clinton. He took office in January 1993 with a quite stable Middle East. He left office in January 2001 with a completely chaotic Middle East. Danny, in that period you're referring to, the number of settlements, illegal settlements, your settlements are considered illegal under by international you, law. Not by me. No, by international law. Danny. Well, that's a, that's a matter then, of discussion. That's not I a mean, matter of discussion. Uh, it is a matter of discussion. Uh, perhaps uh, for uh, you and your uh, settler uh, friends, I, I, no, for the rest no, of the no, world, there's no, no, really no discussion. No, I, I mean, uh, show me the tribunal that have, that have decided that. And I believe then, it's called the International Court of Justice. Oh, no, it doesn't. Ruled in 2004 maybe, that settlements maybe, were a violation well, someday, of the Fourth Geneva Convention. May, okay, let's talk about the Fourth Geneva Convention, okay? You reject the Fourth Geneva Convention? No, I don't reject it. It doesn't apply to Judea and Samaria. Very simple. Even I though mean, the International Court of Justice says it applies, 
The International yeah. Committee for the Red Cross says it applies. Maybe. The European Union says it applies. Maybe. The UN Security Council says it applies. The US State Department says it applies. Everyone in the world says it applies apart from you, Danny. So I'm Maybe. confused here when you say it's a discussion. I will be glad to explain why it doesn't Please. apply. But the Fourth uh, Geneva Convention, just yeah. for the purpose of our viewers, says that an occupying power cannot transfer parts of its population, i.e. you, into, a, well, into an occupied zone. Uh, I, am not, I am a layman. In, 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 uh, I am not a jurist. But my, you know, common sense that he challenged you to answer it is if we are the occupying power according to the Fort Geneva Convention, which power, which country did we occupy? Which state did we occupy? We didn't occupy any state. I mean... And yet that argument, was the, no, no, and yet that argument me, of the layman me, was rejected me. in 2004. No, it was not. It was not. It was not rejected Danny, by very important you, jurists. You, International you, Court you, of Justice. You, 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 you no, name, I'm going to ask you a very simple okay, question. Just, the ICJ just one, just, just in 2004 answer. said just you're wrong. Answer. Dismiss that answer. argument. That's one, one answer. Do you reject you, the ICJ? Is a simple you, question, yes you, or no? I think it's completely erroneous. I, I, Israel's policy is based in, in, on legal uh, uh, advice. Dr. Alan Baker, in the Levy report, explains perfect, perfectly well why the Fort Geneva Convention that do not apply, does not apply can you, can, For the to purposes Judea of our audience, can you tell us where Dr. Alan Baker lives? As far as I know, in Jerusalem. No, he's he not a, a settler. He lives no. in a settlement. No, no, he's not he a settler. He lives in a settlement. No, he's not a settler. And he works for a settler organization. He's, he's, he's not a settler. Of the settlement. He was that an Israeli, is Israeli the, ambassador. Kind of he was an Israeli forward. ambassador to Canada. Do you a accept person? the authority of the UN Security Council? Well, there are rules uh, uh, which uh, uh, decisions of the UN Security Council apply or not. By the oh, way, you get to pick and choose resolutions. No, no, no. There is no, no. Look, uh, but Saddam Hussein was known that. Maybe, maybe. Look. Um, there are rules which Security Council resolutions are binding, which Security Council resolutions are not binding. Uh, but so when UN Security Council Resolution 465 says Israel must cease immediately building settlements, that's not binding. That's something to pick and choose. I don't know. I, again, uh, you, can, you can bring uh, these uh, it's issues. It's quite important. You can't yes, fall back on that. It's quite important. Look, it's the future of Medi, Medi, Israel will not give its future to resolutions of any international body. In January, a UN report came out saying that you guys could potentially be prosecuted as war criminals in front of the ICC. Does that bother you? Does that worry you? That <laughs> well, you may, somebody may come for you in the well, night? Uh, uh, you know, that report by the UN uh, Human Rights Commission um, is uh, uh, it's really shameful. To write a whole report about settlements and uh, the influence of security measures on the Palestinian population, and not to mention, even in one word, the security threats that Israel poses, that's a lack of uh, international, of uh, intellectual uh, integrity. Um, so uh, it's very difficult to, okay. to, to, to talk seriously uh, about that uh, report. Okay, so you reject that as well. Hannah Weisfeld uh, is in our audience here. She is the director of, of uh, Yakad, which is a pro-peace, uh, pro-Israel, uh, NGO based here in London. Hannah, you've been listening to Danny. He's spoken about Zionism, about national narrative, about the legality. What's your response to what you've been hearing? I I'm interested to know why you think um, keeping two and a half million people without their basic human rights makes Israel securer. Because in the British Jewish community, who, which is the realm in which I work, 70% of this community thinks that settlement expansion is, is endangering Israeli society. 75% believe that actually a two-state solution and land for peace is the best way forward. And the international consensus, as Mehdi says, is very much that settlements are doing a great disservice to Israel. And the rhetoric inside this country today is that as Israel builds, its reputation and its position and standing in the world diminishes and diminishes. And actually, your national security is by no means safer by having two and a half million people in your realm, on your border, who are, vote, who are stateless and don't have the right to vote. Hannah, I respect the national aspirations of the Palestinians. 
I do not deny the, 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 the national spirit of the Palestinians. Because I, I respect them, I understand them so well, I fear them so much. You know, a delineation mark, let, let, let me, a delineation mark or a fence has two shortcomings. It doesn't stop missiles, but more importantly, it doesn't stop dreams. How can you say that you respect a Palestinian national aspiration? When it's what very simple. Those two, you cannot reconcile Hold on, hold on, hold on. I want you mentioned Palestinian national aspiration. Dr. Garda Kami is a Palestinian academic and author. She was forced to leave her family home in 1948. Garda, Danny says he respects your national aspirations. What have you heard so far? My national aspirations, you respect them, do you? I see. Well, the way you would respect them is by getting out of my land. That would be the best illustration of how much you respect my national aspirations. I find you fascinating, Mr. Diane. I really do. I can't understand how you have such self-assurance. A man who was born in Argentina, whose family comes from the Ukraine, and is actually wanting people, sensible people, to believe that he has some connection with my country. But, no, but, no, no, but there's another point I want to put to you, since you respect me so much. <laughs> Tell me, to many people, you, despite your eloquence, represent nothing other, you and your fellow settlers, nothing other than common thieves. You live on stolen land, you drink stolen water, you eat stolen fruit, you farm stolen uh, uh, farms. Convince me I will. and the audience and the viewers that you are not, you and your settler friends are not common thieves. Okay, Danny, let Danny respond okay. to that. Okay. Dr. Kami, you are not opposed to settlements. You are opposed to Israel's existence. The first sentence about me being born in Buenos Aires rejects Zionism. That's okay. Yes, you're, you're right. I mean, my exchange of views with Hannah is as legitimate as my exchange of view with you, and you are entitled to reject Zionism. But that proves exactly what, is, what I was saying. There are two national movements that completely contradict each other. And that's, you see me as the 19th century colonialist, and no. I see myself, you're not me, no, you see no, no, I, I Zionism. I see you I, I, as I a suppose you're not Zionist, right? No, you are anti-Zionist. I see you as a common I, I think you, will, you are a proud anti-Zionist. <laughs> I see you uh, as a common okay, seed. It's okay. much simpler so, than that. I, I will answer, I, I, I will answer, but let's be, uh, as I said, with, with intellectual integrity. You see Zionism as a colonialist movement, right? Me and millions okay, of other so, people. So my, my discussion with you proves exactly the point I am trying Danny, to make. Danny, do you not see settlements at all as a colonial project? No, not at all. Not colonial at all? Not. No, they are exactly as, as colonial as Israel. If, if Dr. Kami sees Israel as a colonialist project, then settlements are a colonialist project. And what about if the Tel point Aviv, about... If Tel Aviv is not a colonialist project, then Maale Shomron is not a colonialist project. Every settlement that was erroneously built on private Palestinian land is being moved. Now, now Migron is the last one, and the Ulpana was the second one that were recently moved. But there are the, the, the minuscule except, exceptions. 42% of the now, West Bank is devoted towards settlement <laughs> infrastructure, <laughs> architecture, Again, military protection, Medi, Medi, water. The question is whether I have the right to be there or not. If so it is, is it your land? The West Bank is your land only? No. Uh, is it shared land? I'm trying I, I to get to the bottom uh, of what your view is. I, I, didn't, I, I think that uh, I don't think it's so complicated to understand it. This is a disputed land. All of Israel slash Palestine. The Israeli government, as you say, claims to want a two-state solution. The Palestinian leadership has conceded 78% of Palestine. Why don't we have a two-state solution? Because you guys are going no, to all the that's land. wrong. Because, that, because Abu Mazen didn't accept How many settlers any are offer. there? How many settlers are there in the West Bank? 360,000. How many were there 20 years ago? Less, 100,000, 120,000. So it's pretty so hard, hard to, to make peace do on you land. Know what is, do you know what is the biggest settlement being built right now? 
You tell me. The Palestinian city of Rawabi, north of Ramallah. That's a settlement, isn't yes, it? Yes, that's, that's, that's dynamic. Where should that's, the Palestinians be living? Like, where should the Palestinians that's okay be living? With it. No, where would you I, like I, the Palestinians to live? Whatever they are. No, no, where? I mean, where? Today, somebody in, comes in, to you and says, Samaria. That's you want, okay, you that's want them perfectly to live there. okay, that's sure. That's long term. Sure. Hold on, I want to bring it, I want to bring it, I want to come back to Gaza. The only people that are advocating transferring populations are those that want, it, that want to throw me out of my home. You've never advocated the Palestinians should move never, to Jordan? Never, You've never said they never, should move to Jordan? Never, never. You say they should stay never. in the West Bank? Sure. Let's bring in Sam Westrop, who's a former director of the British Israel Coalition. Uh, he's also a fellow at the uh, Gatestone Institute in New York. Um, you're listening to these arguments here. What's your take? Why can't we get past the fact that there are two peoples living in disputed lands uh, that they do contradict What's other, but let's talk about What would you do? How would you solve the conflict? <laughs> I, wish, I wish it was that simple. I, I think I support a two-state solution, but I'm, I'm not quite sure because I don't understand. But where should the Palestinians make their state if there are 350,000 living in the West Bank, another 200,000 But that is, precisely the, that is precisely the point. It is up for negotiation, and that is precisely what the Palestinian well, it's leadership... It's not up for negotiation. Danny says he's not going anywhere. I, I, Mr. Diane doesn't represent me, but the, the, the Palestinian leadership are not negotiating. They use the settlements, Mr. Damage, the word pretext, Ella. They use the settlements as a pretext for not talking. Look, we've got to nail a few things here. It is Israel that has never, ever produced a peace proposal mm. to the Palestinians, ever. You know, neither Dr. Kame nor myself are governmental, uh, 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 are in government. Uh, maybe You're we quite are, close to the Israeli no, Prime Minister. No. No, but we are... We Did are, you appear in an election ad for him? Yeah, that's right, but I, I don't set his policy. I mean, I, I am... You seem I, to be doing a pretty good job of influencing around I don't know, maybe, maybe I do, well, maybe I don't. Short, but he, here's my question to you. You have yet to tell us what the Palestinians should do. Should they, should they should stay. You said, oh. don't go to Jordan, stay in Judea and Samaria. Sure, of Hannah course. pointed out they're going to stay without a vote, without any political rights. You said in an interview recently... <laughs> Um, that you never, you refused to visit South Africa under apartheid sure. because you considered that to be racist, totally immoral, unjust. Some people might say the words pot kettle black at you. The, the comparison is completely invalid. Desmond Tutu said, I've oh. been to the occupied territories and I've witnessed the racially segregated roads and housing well. that reminded me so much of the conditions we experienced well. in South Africa under apartheid. Why should I take your word over his? Uh, I don't know, because maybe I know the facts better. First of all, you have to know that uh, I am quite ashamed of Israel's policy, the official policy of Israel towards the South African regime during the apartheid era. And I understand the resentment of uh, anti-apartheid activists in South Africa against Israel. Now, the comparison between, uh, for instance, there is no road, there are no apartheid roads, that's a completely uh, uh, urban legend. Apartheid was a racist regime and I have no even the slightest racist feeling, uh, on the contrary towards the Palestinians. I respect them completely. The world's obsession with reaching a final status agreement now immediately prevents us, all of us, Israelis and Palestinians, to tackle exactly those issues. For instance, removing checkpoints. Yes, I am in favor of Israel taking risks and removing as many checkpoints as possible. If it was my decision, I would like to dismantle completely the fence, the wall that Israel built. Well, let's talk about dismantlement in part two. We're going to take a break there and come back in the second half and bring in some of our audience members as well. Join us in part two of Head to Head to continue this discussion with Danny Dyer. Welcome back to Head to Head, part two. Uh, I'm joined here by our guest, uh, Danny Dyan, the outgoing chairman of the Yesha Settler Council in the West Bank. Uh, Danny, you talked a great deal in part one about the narrative and the rights and it all being about rights. By what right? Because I look at you and you don't meet the classic stereotype in the West of a settler with a skull cap and a machine gun in the arm and a Torah in the other. Don't meet that. You're, you're a secular man, I believe. Yeah. On what grounds then? do you say you have a right to be in the West Bank when the international community says you have no right to be there? As I said, uh, it is my homeland. You're from Argentina, I believe. Yes, yes, but as a Zionist, I believe that uh, every Jew should 
of course, is entitled, but should uh, uh, live in the land of Israel. That's, as I said, the national liberation movement of the Jewish people. Um, and the fact that this is, this is the cradle of Jewish civilization. I mean, it seems even funny for me that they have to explain why it. Uh, 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 this is the places, those are the places in which Jewish civilization, Jewish cultures, Jewish history uh, uh, happened. I mean, that's a, right that uh, we were expelled from the land of Israel. We went for very long 2,000 years to the diaspora, but we yearned uh, to return, and we did. Do you ever feel bad, uncomfortable, guilty even when you see that in order to return, lots of other people had to leave against their will, some of whom are living in refugee camps? Well, I am not sure they had to leave, they left. The fact that there is another ethnic group there, another national group, that feels dispossessed because of that, is tragic. Um, that's the reason uh, Zionist movement, Israel, accept partition. The moment they rejected it, I have no remorse towards the Palestinians. You know, in the balance of uh, morality, in the balance of justice, both in the aims and both in the, ta in the tactics, I think that we have the upper hand by far. Therefore, no, I don't feel any, you know, remorse or, or burden on my conscience. You know, this, this old Jewish joke about the guy that uh, killed, his, killed his father and then goes to court and asks for clemency because he's an orphan. Um, that's in many ways what the Palestinians are doing. They try to take the whole land by force. Uh, attacks on Palestinian property, oh, on oh, olive no, groves, no, 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 okay. price tag attacks, okay, I believe okay, they're called. Okay, sure. I am, I am the most outspoken person uh, against those things. I think we it's, a, to stop them. A, it's a moral abhorrence. Um, I really cannot understand why the Israeli police does not succeed in uh, stopping those fringe elements. Uh, it's, it's shameful, yes. But the thought that building home is a crimin, is, is a war crime? On someone building else's land? Home, it's not someone else's land. That's exactly the, the, the argument. So it's all, it, the it, land was all empty. So what you just I, arrived no, and it's picked not a hilltop. Empty, no. It didn't bother anyone. First of all, first of all yes. The, Do you it, really the, believe the this? The populated area of Judea and Samaria is four to five percent. Oh, come of, on, Danny, you know you're but being dis again, maybe you, know you, if you, you, you cannot, According to Betzalem's you, you, report you based cannot, on official data, 42 percent of the West Bank is controlled by settlers, 60 uh, percent by maybe, the Israeli military. Maybe. The built area of Judea and Samaria in which there are settlements is three to four percent of the area. There is plenty of room for millions of Come Jews on. and millions of Palestinians in Judea and Samaria. I don't want to displace anyone. I want to bring in uh, a couple of our experts. Garda, two questions, very br if you can be brief. Mm. Danny says Palestinians weren't expelled, including yourself. He also says there's plenty of space for the Palestinians. Deal with those two points, please. You know, I tell you, if I uh, took uh, uh, Mr. Diane seriously, I would be really upset. But the sort of things he's saying are so preposterous and have been shown so clearly to be untrue and to be just cliches in order to justify uh, theft and keeping other people's property. Uh, you know, don't underestimate people's intelligence. Uh, I indeed had to leave my home. My family had to leave its home in Jerusalem in uh, April 1948 because of the activities of Jewish militias. That is precisely why we had to leave. It's nothing to do with partition, but everything to do with Jewish killer gangs that went round and expelled people. Secondly, you, Mr. Diane, are living on land, some of which would have belonged to my family because we originate in the West Bank town of Tulkarn. The land of my grandfather and my father and my uncles was taken by Israel and the settlements that are being built all the time, including yours, are on land that belonged to us and many other 
Palestinians in the same predicament. So really, uh, you shouldn't be saying this sort of thing. The only reason that you can come out with this preposterous stuff is for one reason and one reason only. Not because you've got a right. You haven't got a shred of a right to my homeland, not a shred. No, no. The reason is that the Israeli army protects you and people like you 24-7. If the Oh, okay, let, let Danny come back in, oh. then I want to bring in Sam. You yeah. wouldn't be there without the IDF, would you? Well, of course, because of the terrorism of the Palestinians. But, you know, <laughs> uh, uh, the, the of course, I mean, the the, 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 why, why do I need protection? I need protection because someone wants to kill me. What you're mixing up is some Palestinians support a one-state binational solution in which Jews and Palestinians but all vote. Coming, you don't. You don't want to give the Palestinians a vote. No, 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 forget, no, forget no, that. I'm no, asking I, you. I'm asking you. Do you support... Do you support a state? Would you live in a state where Palestinians and Jews both vote for a government? I don't yes, support it, but no, you it don't, will you don't be want part, to give the Palestinians. I, 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 I don't support it, but in the context, in the framework of a real negotiations on the final status solution, that can be raised on the negotiating table. Right now, to propose that is like saying, "Look, I tried to kill you. I rejected your compromise, and since I didn't succeed to to kill you." and you didn't accept my compromise, let commit suicide. Your Please compromise involves suicide. you building more settlements. Sam Westrop, you've been waiting patiently to come back no, in. No, I think we need to get a, a few facts straight. Um, firstly, the idea that Palestinian terrorism is a response to Jews living in neighborhoods of the West Bank is, is utterly false. Let's remember the Hamas charter calls for the eradication of, of Jews worldwide. Uh, the Fatah uh, uh, website regularly features maps of a Palestine where no Israel exists. Uh, even and here in vice the West, even here, I'm, I'm, yeah, of course. Look, the, the, the point is, we need to talk. And the, the message I'm hearing tonight from everyone, including uh, uh, Dr. Kami, is, 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 is a visceral, regressive message that doesn't talk about solutions. Um, well, I wasn't asked. Come on, ask me. Look, everything, everything I'm I've, I've everything I've, I've everything I have heard from you has been has, has accused uh, uh, the other side of stealing your land, of making you. Uh, a, a Correct. victim in the most dis disgusting way. True. Let's remember, let's remember that 950,000 Jews fled from Arab lands displaced. Let me ask you before I go to the audience, if an Israeli government tomorrow says it is time to get out of the settlements, it is time to get out of the settlements that in particular that are beyond uh, the wall that's built in the West Bank, would you and your fellow settlers obey that order or would you disobey that order? Well, uh, we will do whatever is permitted in a democratic society to reverse the decision. Um, I can assure you, whether I like it or not, that if an Israeli government decides, it will be done. It will be done? Yes. So it's not irreversible, as you said in your New York Times column? Uh, I don't think an Israeli government will decide that. But if it decides it, I suppose it will die. It will tear the fabric of the Israeli society. It but will have catastrophic consequences for peace and for stability. But I don't think that the uh, um, decision democratically taken by an Israeli government will not be performed. OK, let me open it up to audience questions. Can we start with the gentleman with the beard just in the third row of the audience there? Assuming you're right and the settlements are there to stay, how do you see the future of the West Bank? Do you see it as a, as a patchwork of completely segregated communities, separate but equal, as they said there elsewhere? Or do you see uh, settlements being desegregated, people moving around, people moving in other communities? In my vision, as long as we don't reach a final status solution, um, we have to make uh, life as better as possible to all of us. Okay, let me, let me bring in another gentleman from the audience who's got his hand on here, to see in the second row. Thank you very much. My name is Glyn Secker. I'm on the Executive Committee of Jews for Justice for Palestinians in this country, representing 1,700 of us. And we have a partner organization in the United States called Jewish Voice for Peace, where there are tens of thousands of members. And we find your views and your actions abhorrent. You're a disgrace to the Jewish people, I'm afraid. <laughs> If you look at your own history, if you look, you're secular and you make your claim to the land in uh, Palestine on the basis of secular facts, read the results of your own university's archaeology departments. 
There was no evidence of the kingdoms of David and Solomon in Eretz Israel. And there's no basis, therefore, for your, your can, claim to the land. Okay, can I, I just, given we're not going to be able to have a full-on archaeological discussion in this <laughs> programme, can I take your first point and put it to Danny, which is you're pretty unpopular with Jews living around the world. Oh, I wouldn't say you so. You wouldn't no, say that the settler no. movement is... I, the, the only difference, you think you have the support no, of the, the majority? The only difference is that I don't have the arrogance of this gentleman I, to say we and represent tens of thousands. I speak for myself. I speak for my community at the most. I respect him because I respect every human being that does not uh, uh, use violence. Just out of interest, do you not think the settlement project is built on violence? No, not at all. How did you get there? We, on, a, on my car. <laughs> and how do you stay there? Protecting ourselves. Didn't you just yourself mention a few moments ago getting rid of checkpoints where Palestinian women are forced to give birth? Babies oh, die in checkpoints. Don't be a demagogue, Mehdi. It doesn't suit you to be a so demagogue. A demagogue? Yes. To quote from a Lancet yes. study, is a demagogue? I, 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 a minute ago, I said that they want the checkpoints dismantled. Exactly. That's, a, that's, so, that's the architecture of violence, isn't oh, it? Oh, it's exactly like... I'm just wondering how you think the settlement Mehdi, project is not based Mehdi, on violence. Mehdi, it's based on men Mehdi, with guns. Mehdi. Uh, it's like you are, I would say that when you travel to the United States, and you go, uh, you use the fact that the security agencies in the airport take precautions, in some cases very invasive, makes you a violent person. No, you are not the violent person. The terrorist that threatens to plant a bomb in the, in the, in the plane is the terrorist. Okay. So I, I reject completely You reject completely. Uh, Gentlemen here in the second row. You asked Danny what the position of the United States is, and the position of the United States is quite clear. They think the settlements are unhelpful but legal. They actually vetoed a resolution in the Security Council which called them illegal for precisely that reason. The gentleman behind you shaking his head with a hand up. Do you want to pass? You've got two populations living side by side under two separate sets of rules and law. I mean, the, Mr. Dayan admitted that Israeli sovereignty doesn't apply, which means Israelis are subject to Israeli law, whereas Palestinians are subject to military law. Yes, the military law that is dictated by the military commander of the West mm. Bank. That is, that is the legal fact. So, so the, re the reason occupation is illegal, uh, 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 the reason settlements are but illegal that's not rather... But I'm subject to military law too. You are subject to, to military, military law, law too. as interpreted by Israeli constitutional law as an Israeli citizen. That has been ruled time and again by the Israeli Supreme Court because you are considered an Israeli citizen even for the purpose of the elections. You are always in electoral zones of Israel rather than um, living abroad as an expatriate. So for some things you're in and for some things you're out. That's precisely the rationale of the problem of settlements, sir. I, I completely agree that this is a... A, a, an abnormal situation created, ab created by circumstances. It doesn't make it right, though, does it? Well, uh, the question is what are the alternatives? If, we, if Israel proposed time and again a solution and it was rejected by the other side, then it seems that there's no solution. You know, Mehdi, you are talking as if we were in some kind of uh, theoretical game. We are talking Danny, I've about, got to ask no, this question no, again. About I've got reality. to ask this question again. We are if talking tomorrow about the Palestinians accepted whatever piece of land you deign to give to them to have for a state, would you accept a Palestinian state? I you will answer not. very simply. I would oppose it because no, no, but so, no, no. You have to so give. So why do you no. keep bringing no, up the state? No, no, Medi, it's a Medi, Medi, to use your word. No, Medi, you have to give to give to, to let me complete the sentence. I suppose that the Israeli government would accept it. And I will explain to you why it will oppose it. Because it will inevitably be the prelude to another war. What will happen if a Palestinian state is established is an influx of refugees, great-grandchildren of refugees from Lebanon, Syria, to the, to the Palestinian state that will push westward towards Israel. The Hamas that, as you may know, won the parliamentary elections both in the West Bank and in Gaza will take power inevitably. Every observer 
objective observer accepts that. I'm not sure that's true, but the, okay. the Palestinian, the, they will take uh, uh, control of the Palestinian state. Uh, that will be uh, so. Your solution is no state to avoid this nightmare scenario. Okay. Lady there in the front row there on the corner. You claim that there are two irreconcilable um, national claims to the land, basically, by is Israeli Jews on the one hand and Palestinians on the other. It strikes me that one way to reconcile them, if, if I were to accept that aspect of your argument, that one way to reconcile them would be for both peoples to live as equal citizens under the same government. And so I want to ask you whether you would accept that. And on principle, you think that that would be a just way to solve the situation? And if not, why not? The answer is that uh, in, in principle, it could be. It's for sure much more uh, 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 logical than to part the small patch of land that is uh, uh, between the Mediterranean and the Jordan. On practical grounds, I uh, assume it will be impossible. By national states, uh, especially after such a bloody conflict of more than 100 years, I wouldn't be very optimistic about the possibility to maintain such a society. But, sorry, do you believe in it in principle? Any um, solution that involves removing people from their homes, whether Palestinians or Israelis, is both immoral and impractical. It's immoral to remove Palestinians from their homes. That's standing home. Yes, Fantastic of course. Gentlemen here in the second. Why, 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 Gent look, Mandy, why, why the sarcasm? Did I say anything? Course, Danny, did I say lots anything? Lots of Palestinians have did been removed from their anything? homes over the past no, did 20, I say 20 anything 30, that, 40 but, years, again, which you seem yeah, to be yeah. in denial about. Find a, a, a quote, a shred of a quote that suggests that they are in favor of moving Palestinian population Danny, from their I spent homes. the last hour asking you, what is your solution? And you hid you. behind the fact that there is none. Status quo. I will tell you. Palestinians, no rights. You. Let, let, you guys, let, all the Let rights. me tell you what is my solution, OK? For the time being. No, no, not for the no, time being. What's uh, your ideal solution? If you could make it happen, there is no, what would it be? We are talking about reality. We are, in, in, in reality, there are not ideal situations. Only in dreams and re, uh, I, I, ideal situations. But I will tell you what I think will happen ultimately. We will have to, the, to this peculiar situation, we will have to devise a peculiar sharing of power, sharing of authority. Oh. We have to think okay. out of the box. Let's take if you are, you confine yourself to uh, uh, established uh, uh, patterns of thinking in international relations, yes, we are doomed to, uh, 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 to continue without a solution. I want to take the gentleman in the second row here, and then I'm going to come to the lady there in the corner. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Dan, and I'm the co-chair of Brits for Peace Now. Peace Now, um, as you probably are aware, um, is Israel's largest uh, peace movement and also the leading um, settlement watchdog, anti-settlement watchdog. Um, thank you very much. It seems like you live in a very selective world, and I think it must be nice to live in it. Um, there are just too many things that you have said that are demonstra demonstratively false. Um, but just a couple of things. Um, one, you say there are no Jewish-only roads. There are. I have been on them. One leads from Jerusalem to Nokdim, which is where uh, That's former not true. foreign minister Avigdor Lieberman true. lives. It, That's it, not it, true. It's it open true. to every human being. It is being. true. Um, That's not true. You, you, know, you can make no, an argument, a false argument. You and say, say that no, no settlements were built on private Palestinian land. Again, um, Ariel Sharon, not, the, not a peace now, Nick, um, by, by any sense. Um, Ariel Sharon commissioned the Sasserin report. Um, into the outposts, the outposts, not the settlements, which are illegal even under Israeli law, um, as well as uh, international law. Um, they said that of the 99, and this was followed up by a Peace Now report, of the 99 illegal outposts, 16 are built entirely on private Palestinian land, 80 out of these 99. Okay, let Danny come back. Partly built on Palestinian land. Come back briefly, and I want to take one final question over there. Uh, well, the, the facts that the gentleman uh, uh, stated with, with great confidence are just... Uh, False. That's a si as simple as that. The road. It is from the road. Ariel I, I invite you, my dear friend. My dear friend. I, un I invite you to travel in my car, in that same road you stated between Jerusalem and Nokdim, and you will see that most often we would drive 
with the Palestinian card in front of us, with the Palestinian card uh, 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 behind us, and a and Palestinian car in the uh, opposite direction. Lady there in the second row. If the Israeli government did decide to, in fact, vote against settlements, how do you think pragmatically that would work? How do you think those thousands of people would move out of the settlements? What do you think that would be the opposition to that, and how do you envisage that situation unfolding? I have no doubt that if a democratic decision will be made, that I don't expect to, to be made, but if it will be made, it will also uh, perform. I have no doubt about it, whether I like it or not. I, I don't want you know, Mehdi to, I don't want you to go frustrated or, or pessimistic home. Give me so, some optimism, okay. Danny. Let's end with an optimistic okay. note. Ultimately, the resolution to the conflict will have to be regional. Uh, when, as I said, there is a set of equations that do not have a solution, you have to change one parameter. The Palestinian national aspirations, as uh, we heard from Dr. Kami, will not change neither the Jewish uh, national aspirations. What will inevitably change, whether I like it or not, and I don't like it, I don't like it, but it's not up to Israel, not up to the UK, and not up to the US, is the regime in Jordan. Why? Because a monarchy in which the monarch rules, I mean, not like your monarchy, is a primitive way of government. The moment that happens, maybe, just maybe, a, new, a whole new gamut of possible solutions to the conflict that do not involve, I say again, do not involve transferring people from their homes, may it become possible. For instance, one of them is two states, one west of the Jordan and one east of the Jordan, governed by the Palestinian majority that exists in Jordan, and shared responsibility over what we call Judea and Samaria, and they call the West Bank. The parliament in Jerusalem will rule the lives of the, Is the Israelis, the, Pal the Palestinian parliament will rule the, Palest the, ru the lives of the Palestinians and the places in which they live, and they will vote accordingly. That's a kind, as I said, of a, Arrangement that today does not exist in the world. It doesn't have a name. I don't know how to call it. Okay. That may be possible in the future. We'll have to leave it there. Thank you very much, Danny, for coming here. Danny Diane and coming and taking part in this robust discussion in the Oxford Union. Thank you all for coming and watching and asking your questions. And thanks to you all watching at home. We will be back for another head-to-head. -head uh, here in the Oxford Union next week.